In this video, I'm going to show you my preferred way of using the Roland TR8 in perfect harmony with the Native Instruments Machine Studio. I'm going to start off by showing you how to use the Machine Studio as the clock source for the TR8, then how to get the audio from the TR8 back into the machine. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is to plug the MIDI cable into one of the Machine Studio's outputs. It doesn't matter which output you use. Then plug the other end into the MIDI in of the TR8. One thing you need to be aware of is that the TR8 needs to be in MIDI clock auto mode. This means that if it detects a MIDI clock signal coming in via its MIDI in, it will use that rather than its own internal MIDI clock. By default, it will be on the auto mode, but it's possible that you might have accidentally changed it. So I'll just show you how you would go about ensuring that it is on the MIDI clock auto mode. Hold down the pattern select button, then turn on the TR8. Now the TR8 is in settings mode. The pad that you need to look for is pad one. You need to make sure that pad one is lit. If it's lit, then it's in MIDI clock auto mode and you're good to go. So press the start button to proceed. Now you need to make sure that the machine is actually sending a MIDI clock signal. You do this via the software by clicking file and making sure that send MIDI clock is selected. You will also be able to ensure that that is on by looking at the out one, out two and out three. If those are flashing, that means it is sending a MIDI clock signal. When I'm using the machine and the TR8 together, I don't actually program the TR8 from the machine because the TR8 has a very good step sequencer of its own and I just like using that for the rhythms. So now that you've got the MIDI clock being sent by the machine and received by the TR8, when you press play, you'll find that both of them start One thing to be aware of is a slight difference in the way the machine and the TR8 start playing. So suppose you've started playing a one bar rhythm with four beats in it, and then you stop it on the machine. The playhead on the machine stays where you stopped it, and when you press play, it will start from where it was stopped. However, the TR8 will start from beat one of the bar that it's on. So if you were to just press play now, the machine and the TR8 would be out of sync. So to make sure that the machine and the TR8 stay in sync, when you want to start the rhythm playing, make sure you press the restart button. You will notice at this point that you can't actually hear anything coming from the TR8, so that is the next step. You need to make sure that the outputs of the TR8 are going into your audio interface. In this example, we're using the complete Audio 6 interface. By convention, the red cable goes in the right output, red for right. So now that's been set up, we need to actually configure the machine to take that input stereo pair. So make sure a sound is selected, and then all you need to do is press the IN1 button. And now when you start the machine playing, the TR8 will start playing and you'll be able to hear the output of the TR8. Now's a good time to make sure the gain level of the TR8 is at an appropriate level. It's not too loud, it's not too quiet. So you want to make sure that the lights flashing are green rather than orange or red, which means it's in danger of clipping or it actually is clipping. If you want slightly more insight into what happened when I pressed the IN1 button, press the CHANNEL button, make sure SOUND is selected, make sure INPUT is highlighted, and then you will see X1 has been selected. If I was to press the IN2 button, X2 would have been selected, and so on. So IN1 refers to the first stereo pair of the audio interface. So, there you have it. That's how you get the Machine Studio to send a clock source to the TR8, then how to get the sound from the TR8 back into the machine. In the next video, I'm going to show you a slightly more advanced way of doing the same thing, by using the four effective analog mono outputs of the TR8 and routing those to four sounds within a group on machine. 
This gives you far more scope and possibilities for processing those sounds individually and making them more individual to yourself. It also gives you the possibility of, say, using the kick sound to trigger a sidechain compressor. So if that's something that interests you, keep an eye out for the next video.